What's up guys, welcome to another episode of the eBay E36 build. Uh, I'm Max, this is Max Works, and today we're going to be tackling a few things to make this thing go vroom. We're going to be putting on a cab back exhaust, we're going to be putting on an intake, and we're going to be putting in a short throw shifter. All that coming up next, stay tuned. Okay, first in line for performance, we are going to install a cold air kit. So this is your factory MAF right here, this is your factory intake elbow, This is your, you're going to keep all of this. Um, but this is a factory air box, it's fairly restrictive on the E36. Um, it's also pretty heavy and big and this whole bulbous thing. So we're basically just going to remove that and install this. This is a $40 uh, eBay special cold air kit and I'll pull it out and show it to you guys in here in a second. Uh, my two cents on eBay cold air kits. First of all, they tend to be cheap and second of all, they tend to fit. Now. On this car, we may have to modify it because I don't want it sticking all the way down to the ground because that's how you hydrolock your engine. Um, but in general, they're worth maybe a couple of horsepower and a lot of sound, and a lot of sound is a lot of attitude, and that's what I want for this car. So that's why we're installing it. Not so much because of power. Uh, plus, I need a new air filter anyway, and it tends to be close to a wash anyway. So let me get this thing unpacked and show you guys what's in it. Okay, so in our kit we have an air filter, decently sized, I would prefer this in black to chrome, but that was an option. I got the black tubing though, tubing is smooth, there's not really any gunk in it. Um, the ends are bead rolled where they need to be. There's this little joiner tube, I maybe this might be an um, exhaust gas recirc thing. We got a nice little silicon joiner, another little silicon joiner, a little bit of edge trim, some brackets, and some of these guys. So first thing we gotta do is we gotta pull the old one out of the car. So to remove the air box, there's two 10 millimeter nuts that go here. Then there's a 10 millimeter bolt that holds this in. This is an air temperature circuit of some sort. It warms the, uh, the throttle body um, for cold starts, I guess. Um, but this is uh, the thing that that extra piece is for. Make sure you don't disconnect these hoses because otherwise scalding hot coolant will come into your face. Ask me how I know. Well, there we go. Remember how I said earlier, these normally fit really well? Every LS Chinese eBay intake I bought fit perfectly. This was a fucking nightmare. Okay, first of all, this valve, obviously plastic. The minute I touched it, it broke. So that was great. I had to basically jump those two hose lines together. They don't really do anything uh, in terms of modern day efficiency. Um, it includes this. The problem was that if you look at this elbow, this doesn't fit in here. And it doesn't line up with this bolt. So I'm not actually entirely sure what this is for or what model this goes to, but we didn't use it. Didn't use these two. Um, there is a rubber boot somewhere that we also didn't use, the little rubber reducer. No clue. No idea where these little brackets go. Um, obviously they don't bolt to anything on here, so that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Oh, here's that little rubber reducer. Didn't use this. I have no idea what this is for because it doesn't fit the MAF or the filter. So what I did was I ended up just using this one piece. Uh, I flipped it around and I put the straight end down here, cut about four inches off of it. So this right here is tightly mated here. There's nothing that really holds this intake in place. And I basically slid the filter down until it um, basically just rests down here. And I'm gonna see if I can maybe zip tie it to something real quick or come up with a little bracket for it. But, cause I don't want this just dangling around here. But that's basically where we're at at this point. Um, Again, 40 bucks, not a big deal, but it's definitely something you gotta make fit. No lights on the dash, and listen to it. Next performance mod that we're gonna install is this. This is an eBay stainless steel exhaust. It looks like a super sprint replica. Um, I think it looks really nice, and hopefully sounds really nice. So first thing we gotta do is get, get the old one off. All right, so here's the factory exhaust. It uses these little clamps on the edges. Uh, basically hold it oops, like this, um, like like this right here on the edge. And these are 13s and there's a bunch of 12 millimeter uh, um, nuts and 13 millimeter bolts that kind of hold all this together. And you can see these are a little different. So this you can basically just slide out of the way. And now we get to figure out how to put in our pipes. There we go. Uh, looks really good. Bolted right in. Got everything tightened up. Got those joiners right there just tightened up. Let's hear how it just sounds. First cold start. So 
so that's it for the performance exhaust it's not as loud as i would have liked it but hopefully it sounds a little better um a once it gets broken in and b uh under load right because revving exhaust don't always sound all that great um but under load hopefully comes alive if not we can always go back in and cut out the resonators or um, get rid of the catalytic converters altogether. Uh, we'll see. So, but for now, that's what I wanted and that's what I got. The final thing on our performance agenda is this. This is basically an E28 Euro shifter or whatever that's been modified. It's been further bent uh, for 40% shift reduction. Uh, this kit comes from understeer. It's a little pricey at $155. Um, but to be honest with you, this is one of the few things that I splurged on because this is the right part done right. And it comes with a brand new shift cup, brand new C-clips, and brand new yellow um, spacer thingies. And so for this, you have to have the car in the air, but it's really not too, too bad of a deal. And it makes a huge difference in everyday drivability of the car. So let's go inside and get started on this. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to get done today before the sun goes down. Now the first step is to yank off the shift knob and the shift boot. The next thing that comes out is this foam rubber thingy. Um, and then this rubber boot down here has to come up as well. And I almost never get these things back where they're supposed to be but at least removing them is generally pretty simple so there we go and I can see how the shift assembly is set up and um, basically we're gonna be replacing this part the cup in there and if you can see down in there um, that's the selector rod and we have to get the clips off now these things are a colossal pain in the butt this is what they look like and um, pretty much the only way to get them off is to just fuck around with them uh, until you get them off. Now that the selector rod down there is removed, and this is basically just dangling around, um, the next step is to get the white plastic thing out. And so there's that. So the trick is to get this thing to rotate 90 degrees. Um, and then that's pretty much it. And there's the difference. See how this is a really short distance and this pivot distance is really long? That's what changes the amount of uh, shift distance you have to travel, right? Because it's a fulcrum. Now, there are other engineering concerns about this as well, but that's the long and short of it. So now we just got to get the new stuff installed, and we'll be shifted. So there we go. Uh, a little grease in the cup. Clip the cup in, and you want to make sure it's pointed back. It's a little bit back towards the driver, basically. A little to the left and a little bit to the back. Um, so now we got to get underneath and put in our new clips aka the not fun part so there we go everything all assembled and before the shifter would go here 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 and now it's just that's first that's second third fourth super smooth super crisp i love it this is an expensive mod but hands down one of the best bmw mods they come with a factory with a really good shifter and when you upgrade it to like a performance shifter like this one um it just it makes the car just so much more fun to drive and it's pretty simple i put this whole thing in in about 30 minutes or so um because i already had the car up in the air all right well thanks for watching guys we put took care of some performance mods on the ebay e36 today um as always i'm max this is max works if you like the video hit the like button if you like this channel hit subscribe button if you want to leave me a comment down below, typey typey and get on with it. Peace.